Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast, and we are here. This is very exciting. We are here to talk about Cedar Cove, as we talked about last week on the show. We're kind of rolling out two uh, pilots for possible shows here on the podcast. Uh, last week, we talked about Army Wives, and we did that. And then this week, we're talking about Cedar Cove, which is a Hallmark show that aired for three seasons. And we are going to leave it up to you, our listeners, to decide which one of the shows, or maybe both of you, but love both of them, uh, <laughs> but which one uh, you want us to cover. And uh, so it's, it's, I'm really curious to see what people like and what's, uh, what's um, going to end up happening. But we're, we're, for this episode, we're talking about the pilot episode of Cedar Cove. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and Caroline is here. Hey, y'all. Yes. And Carrie is here. Yes, hello. Yes, so fun to have you both <laughs> with us. And uh, so, did either of you watch Cedar Cove when it when it was airing? Were you a fan? I got so like it some, but I wasn't like an avid watcher because mm-hmm. I just started becoming like a fan of Hallmark when it like aired for the first time. So I was mainly watching like the Christmas movies and stuff then. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and so I looked, I double checked when it actually aired, and I totally missed it back in 2013 when it aired, and then it was on for three seasons. I was not really aware of it. Um, I haven't even read the books that it's based on by Debbie mm-hmm. McComer. I, um, it's just been off my radar, really. So it's it was exciting to tune in this time and see see it with fresh eyes, especially because you know, I know I'm more familiar with the actors and actresses now. And so to see some of them in their older roles is, um, was really kind of a treat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it was on Netflix or something like that. Some kind of one of the streaming services. I, I, I think I watched the first season and I don't think I watched anything more than that. I think I just got kind of distracted and, and didn't watch any more, but I think the first season on streaming, if my memory call recalls correctly, but I mean, it is kind of fun to, to watch it now and be like, Oh, Brennan Elliott. He's yeah, the best yeah. girl. I know. I can't wait till we talk about him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's going to be a, an interesting thing. And, you know, Andy McDowell, she's obviously the star of this show uh, she plays Olivia, the judge, and uh, and Caroline. What did you think of Andy McDowell here as as our lead? I, I liked her as the lead in here, like the the other movie she would like on the Beach House and other stuff. Like I, uh-huh. I really I wasn't like a real fan, but I, I liked her in this role as a as a judge. Like I thought that was it fit her good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know her more for her comedies. I don't think. I uh, sometimes she's I don't think she's maybe the greatest actress in the world but like she does pick pretty good projects and uh, I you know I know her from Four Weddings and a Funeral I know right. her from uh from Groundhog, Groundhog Day of yeah. course <laughs> and uh I a green card so she's done some uh some fun movies and uh she does have I think a charisma about her and i i think that she does a good job in this role i the uh, as olivia i think that you buy her as this competent uh intelligent uh mm-hmm. independent judge mm-hmm. uh for this role and i think it works pretty well and she has one daughter who is played by sarah Smythe. i think i've seen how you say it mm-hmm. uh, it's, <laughs> uh her, her daughter's name is justine and uh and justine there's quite a bit of drama going on uh with justine in this movie first i mean in this show uh she is uh dating warren saget which is such a villain name i love that name warren saget Oh man! (laughs) Played by Brendan Elliott, and he is such a bad man of business, and I am here for it. I love Brendan Elliott as a villain. I wish Mm -hmm. that he got to play villain more. Uh, He was a villain in Kiss at Pine Lake, which I love love him. (laughs) 
Yeah, okay. This is yeah. this is good. This is my first exposure to him as a villain. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so when it. I started watching it, I was like, oh, I love that. Oh, he's great. And then, you know, you find out they're a dating couple at the restaurant. And it's like, oh. And then as the movie goes on, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to like this guy. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. He's the villain. <laughs> yeah. He is a greedy businessman, Warren Saget. <laughs> and uh yeah he is engaged to justine and you kind of feel like why is he even bothering with just right. like i don't yeah. quite get it because she seems way like way too kind of timid and i mean maybe he feels like he could control her but i don't really see yeah why he's even interested in her at all i bet that's it though that it's a yeah me too and it's a, some sort of, something's in it for him as far as image and, you know, having a wife, a st stability, that type of thing, but for all control purposes, it seems like to me. Yeah. Um, she was so, I had to get adjusted to that she was supposed to be so young. She didn't seem that young to me when she was first introduced on the mm. scene. And then it was like, all of a sudden this, oh, this high school reunion and all these things, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I had to, oh, yeah. oh, there's an age discrepancy. Like it just, it took me a little while. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she's pretty insecure. You, you kind of understand why I guess she is attracted to Brendan Elliott's character just because he's, I mean, he's handsome, but also father because, figure. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. And, uh, but yeah, it's definitely a, not a great relationship. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. This is bad. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> no, not at all. And uh, so, and, uh, so then we also have Dylan Neal, uh, playing Jack Griffith, another gr great classic name, Jack Griffith. <laughs> he is the editor of the local newspaper. He's kind of new in town, the Cedar Cove Chronicle and uh he is a recovering uh, uh alcoholic and uh he uh he's you know kind of struggling with that struggling with his past and uh he ends up going on a date with olivia mm -hmm. in this first pilot what did you think of dylan neal as this role what do you think caroline I, I love Dylan Neal. I, I'm, I'm happy to see it, like, because I love Gourmet Detective, like, the first couple of movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I, got, I, I like seeing him, and he he fit the role. Like, I, the beard kind of threw me off for a bit. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I, I thought he was just refreshing, actually, in this role, to be honest. Um, he you could tell there's a mystery about him. You kind of wonder why he came from the big city to the small town. He's kind of trying to learn the ropes and the lay of the town and what makes news. And he just can't believe it. You know, the certain things that are newsworthy here. And it's just <laughs> kind of a joke to him. So you start to get an insight that, oh, okay, I wonder why he's here, you know? And he's a little mysterious and he had this mysterious way about him. So towards the end then when we do find that out what you said Rachel you know about him being a recovering alcoholic and um it was like ah, I knew it I knew something was up you know I knew but it was mm -hmm. that was heartbreaking though too to see mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have him kind of go through like mm -hmm. it's still hard for me and this is, yeah. this is like my last chance type of thing yeah. well that's what I think is promising about the show compared yeah. to other Hallmark shows is that I think that they had more flawed characters in this show yes, compared, compared to the other Hallmark shows uh, that uh, that I kind of wish that we got to see more of that character growth and more of because I think that uh, that in too many of the current Hallmark shows they're just really scared to have any flaws that last beyond two episodes mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that have to be solved immediately. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah it was more risky having like all these like different characters mm -hmm. and i like that yeah. yeah me too honestly too i don't like the i don't like the whole arc of like someone has too many problems you know like like they have something every week that you're like that is a big deal you're just gonna gloss over it. yeah this seemed really kind of 
it set the stage, even Andy McDowell's character, um, Olivia. Right. She was so, she wasn't one dimensional, that judge who was mm-hmm. so, you know, she was a mom and you saw that mom side to her. She, she was grieving. You saw that mm-hmm. side to her, you know, she made mistakes. She makes quick judgments. She's, she's a little emotional, even in mm-hmm. her job, like, but that's okay. Cause that, that ended up well, but, um, I liked that. I yeah. Liked that Cause you, was- you want your characters to 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 grow and to i mean it's one thing in a cute two-hour movie to have uh maybe not have the deepest characters in the world but for a show you want it to have some uh some depth to your characters some layers to your characters and uh, when you're done with that i have a question yeah please go ahead Mm -hmm. do you know if this pilot like this was kind of a movie well it wasn't well, I don't know how long it was, but was it always to introduce the series or was it just kind of a standalone thing at first? I think it was to introduce the series, but you make up, bring up a good point. So there's actually, if you look up the show, like on Hallmark Movies Now or things, you'll see that what we're going to talk about is not actually the first episode. There's a separate, it's, it's a separate kind of listing, if that makes sense. It's uh-huh. like, this is, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of similar to like the when when it calls the heart movie mm-hmm. that's that what I was, was before this about. before the series uh, except for that you know you even had different actors and stuff in this it, there's only one actor that's different in this than in the series uh you have in this movie uh this pilot you have Grayson Holt playing uh uh playing Seth uh who is the uh high school boyfriend of justine uh, and in the series he's played by cory Sevier. okay and so that's that's the only major difference i think uh, as far as the casting but okay. yeah that is a good point to bring up that that's what we're talking about here is the pilot not the first episode so it gets a little little confusing um but mm-hmm. yeah they were probably i mean like any other pilot they were probably just kind of testing and then you know if it if it does well then they uh then they go oh. ahead with uh their first you know f- batch of episodes first four or five episodes i think is usually what's typically greenlit and then uh, you know then they go from there let's take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast they're the good folks over at care of and they make getting vitamins and supplements easy and hassle-free. They can come right to your door so you don't have to go out shopping or take any kind of risk to go get your vitamins. They come right to you. And what's really nice is that you can take their online quiz and you answer some questions about your diet, your health goals, and your lifestyle, and they recommend the vitamins that will be the most helpful for you. And so, for instance, I took the quiz and it only like it only takes a few minutes and they we were able to narrow down some things that will help me hopefully with my sleep because that's one of my biggest health problems is that I have a hard time uh, with my sleep uh, issues and uh, so it's really great they come to you right to your door and you get these little packets that you uh, you can take every day and so if you are want to put some in your purse or you're traveling or something like that uh, they're very 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 easy for you to take and uh, and it's just really positive very personal there's a great attention to detail they have great quality that you can see and taste they focus on quality science and research that goes into each of their products and recommendations they are their yummy protein powders are made with wholesome ingredients you can recognize like organic cocoa and pink himalayan sea salt i recommend taking the quiz getting the vitamins that you need and uh, and checking out care of uh, for 25 percent off each of your first three months of care of go to take care of.com slash hallmarkies 25 enter code hallmarkies 25 that's 25 percent off each of your first three months of care of go to take care of.com slash hallmarkies 25 enter code hallmarkies 25 but yeah in this episode it starts out with uh as far as the plot uh is uh Olivia is helping a divorced uh is seeing a, a case of a divorce 
Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems pretty clear cut. The one uh, officer, he, he's about to leave uh, and on duty, they want a divorce. And she says, no, uh, I want you to wait a little bit longer. Uh, and Jack is very critical of this and says, uh, isn't this, a, this is a slam dunk. This is an obvious case. And she says, no. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, that, what did you think of the, the case uh, part of this episode as far as this divorced couple? Uh, did you, did you, Carrie, do you think that was a good, a good story? Yeah, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was an interesting story. That couple just, it broke my heart. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they were just rushed into marriage, you know, can I talk about this? Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> rushed into marriage because um, she was pregnant and he was leaving. And so he married her, um, did right by her and married her. And then didn't really sound like have a lot of time to build a marriage until he came home and he came home on the circumstances that this, this baby was born and only lived four days. And so um, mm. this little baby died. And so he came home even after he didn't even get to meet this baby. They hardly knew each other. Like their grief was propelling them towards divorce. And um, I think she saw this as, as the judge. She, she, once she understood all those details, she saw this and kind of wanted to give them more time. The only thing I don't understand is why she, her decision was met with such criticism. You know, mm -hmm. like, why did she have to give them a divorce? You know, she's the judge here making this call. Why was that such big news to Jack, then to like the guys in the big city, the federal, mm -hmm. who were considering her for federal judge. I didn't understand why that was a big deal. Can you guys shed some light on that? Was it because, I don't know. What, I mean, what yeah, I mean, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know if that would be that unexpected, but it, I mean, from, it seems like from my friends and stuff that have gone through divorces, it seems like there's nothing but like delays and, and mm -hmm. uh, that they wouldn't be that uncommon, but right. I think the idea that the show was trying to do is that people were, were are worried that she she thinks too much with her heart versus like the law yeah. being a strict strict authoritarian as far as the law goes. I but see. but nothing that she did was like illegal or improper. Right. Uh, she has every right to to delay if she wants to delay. That's her right as a judge, as far as yeah. I I can see. I mean, yeah. there might be some extreme example where you could, I guess, uh, claim some kind of uh, conflict of interest, I guess, maybe, uh, but uh, right. or that somehow the judge is unfit to, you know, make the decision. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I don't know. I mean, it seemed like a, a delay is not, not on that level. No, no. I didn't yeah. think the thing that bothered me too, it bothered me that, uh, it was such a small town, yet she didn't know. She didn't know about this. This mm -hmm. baby. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. But you know, with the base on town, in town, I guess, and all these men coming in and and families, probably a lot of turnover. It, I, I'm guessing there's obviously they. Well, she was a part of the town, actually. Her dad owns that restaurant. Well, I don't know. Part of the reason why she kind of wants wants them to uh wait is because she has also lost a child so we find out that's that what about. i was yeah mm. i was gonna say because she felt like it was like like her marriage maybe and like maybe if they had a little bit more time to grieve properly maybe it wouldn't turn out like her marriage did mm -hmm. that's why i was thinking that she wanted to delay because when they said that she lost they lost a child you could see it in her face like mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. she yeah. was yeah yeah so why do you think, why do you think she brushed, like swept that under the rug when Jack brought that up at the end? He said, do you think this is why? And she mm -hmm. was, she kind of like dismissed it. Yeah. I, I feel like she just was kind of like, oh, I don't really want to talk about that. Um, yeah. But I, I don't think, I think uh, she maybe knows that there's a little bit of truth to that. You yeah. know, like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it uh, um. <laughs> because how could it not influence you a little bit? I mean, I don't think we ask that of judges to not have, uh, I mean, they have to follow the law, but the law is 
that doesn't mean that their own personal life experience doesn't doesn't uh impact the interpretation of the law right and uh, and how the how they see it and Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing with jurors, you know, that, that, uh, that's, that's the way our system is built is on having, having, uh, our fellow citizens, mm-hmm. you know, decide the case and, and, uh, on whatever, I mean, as a juror, you should be following yeah. the law, but technically you can, you can make whatever, whatever criteria that you want. And that's mm-hmm. up to the lawyers to uh to dissuade or persuade Mm -hmm. uh the jury and the judge Mm -hmm. and uh so unless there's some kind of corruption Mm -hmm. going on then that's obviously a problem but that's not the case here so it's it's an interesting thing and so and the 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 son that was lost uh it was actually a twin of justine and so Mm -hmm. that's also probably part of why she's in this toxic relationship is she hasn't she has some survivor guilt i think about all of mm-hmm. this with her um with her brother and her uh uh and it was when they were 13 so uh, it wasn't like when they were babies or something she remembers them obviously and uh so it's an interesting thing and uh the and it's it's interesting too because i think the whole idea of this sort of local town reporter was way more valid back when the show was made uh 2013 and now it's just like now i think he would definitely be a blogger or some Mm -hmm. kind of a i don't know some kind of internet yeah uh, the idea of uh, not that there aren't no town reporters but i don't know yeah. it's just a dying, even, like you dying said, breed small towns right now in 2020 <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh be it more would, up to date yeah it would be yeah more of a, a blogger or podcaster probably yeah i think <laughs> if it was 2020 yeah, and uh so that's interesting uh i did get a laugh when they have the seagull calling contest in the town <laughs> i kind of made me laugh because <laughs> i love I like that in the town I, 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 liked actually, I liked on the way to the seagull calling contest how he gets caught in that parade that a marching band yeah. he's like caught in it and he's like <laughs> trying to work his way through it and he's like exasperated with this small town stuff going on and it just yeah. was funny to me that was my laugh out loud yeah I grew up in a small town so I can relate a little bit uh to <laughs> Uh, yeah to (laughs) i don't think we had anything too wacky in our town but yeah we had that's my doctor (laughs) yeah (laughs) that was funny yeah that was good yeah she's the judge of the of the uh and she's like isn't that a conflict of interest (laughs) (laughs) um so jack asks olivia on a date they go on the date and uh, things go really well. They have really great chemistry, and uh, and then he, she invites him for a drink, and he, uh, not knowing his past, and he refuses. And so she thinks, oh, maybe things didn't go well, but then she learns that it was because he is a he's he's in recovery, mm-hmm. and so you know that's that's really good. it's a. Uh, that was good. I do think they had chemistry, the two of yeah, them. They, yeah, yeah. I do too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also like that Jack has a parakeet named Hank. That, <laughs> that makes that made me laugh. And he had he yeah. couldn't go home to drop it off before he picked her up, so it's in the car. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. yeah. <Poor, poor, laughs> really cute. <laughs> I appreciated. I thought he was so natural, and that she just responded to him really well. And uh, yeah, I I liked their chemistry. To be yeah. honest, he he was a pleasant surprise in this mm-hmm. for me. I, yeah. I thought that I would like her. I definitely like the small town um, storyline. I, I think that provides just a lot of fun, quirky things. Um, but he was he was fun. I thought you know mm-hmm. he kept things light even though there's there's depth to him yeah but he was fun with her and i wondered how many people are fun with her you know she's the town judge they, they probably yeah. Take yeah 
and he comes in and he's just you know enchanted by her and he thinks mm -hmm. he wants to charm her i i liked it yeah yeah and uh oh olivia hates warren they have I a pretty what. dice yeah they have a pretty <laughs> dicey dinner together and <laughs> And uh, she also tells Jack, she says, I think it's important to stay within the law, but in this case, I felt it was the right thing to do. And so. Regarding yeah. um, Warren or reg what? The, the, the no, divorce. the divorce case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It kind of right. jumps around a little bit, the episode. Uh, but this is when Jack finds uh, pictures of Warren in that are being thrown away but at the sheriff's office with other women and he, mm. he, that are being, he collects them, gives them to Olivia. And uh, yeah, so Warren is a, is a bad dude. They really do. I mean, they're supposedly that they have, you know, that they have the Seth character uh, and they really do stack the deck in favor of the Seth character. I mean, there is no question at all that, that who she should pick at all. Well, you know, I said, I feel like he did show some immaturity, you know, <laughs> like you can't blame him. He's young. So, but he did show some immaturity just as far as like, I mean, he's, he's totally assuming she comes on his boat. Justine comes on the boat because she wants to be unfaithful to this boyfriend yeah. who goes out of yeah. town to Warren and he takes advantage of that. And then he like throws this tantrum when she gets engaged and he says, Oh, you really, really showed me, huh? Or something. And I was like, okay seth i thought i was supposed yeah. to like you <laughs> yeah yes. that's that's true it's like, why is she with so either of these people <laughs> i know right like slim pickings <laughs> <laughs> yeah like can we have a third option exactly <laughs> give me a third option <laughs> yeah i mean but like here you've got like the philanderer greedy businessman he's you know and then on the other side you've got like somewhat nice guy from her past that actually seems to love her you know like it, yeah. <laughs> i feel like it's stacked very uh very yeah. but you're right there is an immaturity there that that uh yeah. is not the best um but we find out more about uh that the twin brother jordan that he drowned uh, so mm -hmm. again justine has a lot of guilt about that um uh, we also uh we also see that warren refuses to go uh to the reunion with justine mm -hmm. which again i i feel like that's something that his character would kind of want to do kind of exactly wanna, like would want to kind of show off and be like oh look at me you know much the town mm -hmm. uh the uh would want to go to the reunion with her mm -hmm when he said like i'll be a chaperone that made me that made me laugh when he was yes, talking yeah. about that he was so much older <laughs> yeah. now yeah. The thing, and the thing i think about him too that he didn't maybe he, why he didn't want to go i feel like guys like him who are they're secretive they were abusive a little you know in that way just didn't have a healthy mm -hmm. relationship they want everything on their terms he's not going to go with her just because she wants him to you know because mm -hmm. he's Mm -hmm. but a supportive partner will do stuff like that and you know it's a give and take but he doesn't want give and take he wants to just give 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 yeah. a, a take from her but he doesn't want to you know he, he wants her to give i mean and he's just yeah like, he's just all about that control and uh yeah so it surprised me but it didn't at the same time i was like oh that's oh. yeah <laughs> yeah that's no that's he true he 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 wants to manipulate and control her uh and so there's as far as the divorced couple the the divorced couple they find out that he he goes and there's a uh fire i think mm -hmm. on the boat on the submarine or whatever and uh and so she's really scared if something happened to him yeah. he find they then she finds out that he's safe and uh they kind of have a moment of reconciliation so mm -hmm. that was that was good that believable was that believable to you rachel and caroline um yeah uh, I, I think pretty pretty believable i mean uh it 
I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they, I felt like they're, they just needed to have like some, of course, that's the way the story sort of builds it up is that, oh, well, they just need to kind of have a big, the big talk and they've just been kind yeah. of, because of their grief and because he was gone. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I felt like it was pretty good. It was pretty believable to me. What did you think, Caroline? I, I, th I think so too. Like, I, I like that they finally had like the, the talk. But mm -hmm. like if maybe if we seen them more like during their relationship before you know like throw like throwback clips and stuff like it, it might have been like oh they really don't need to be together but just what they show was like uh it's believable i think mm -hmm. yeah it, it seemed like they just needed that they each needed to give a little indication that they wanted to keep going and then they would be like okay like on the same page like i was just dying for them to get on the same page like mm -hmm. hey I want you here. I'll take yeah. care of you. Or, you know, I was so relieved when she said that because I'm like, yes, it's obvious that you want that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought so too. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that every episode of the show is sort of case driven, you know, mm -hmm. as, uh, mm -hmm. as unlike some, obviously, if you're talking about courtroom shows, uh, the legal dramas, then, then those are going to be case driven. But in my memory serves me right that's not the case for every episode but i could be wrong that's a good point okay yeah. yeah uh but uh but yeah i mean this was a pretty like they do pack quite a bit in to this one uh one episode and uh this i thought was a pretty pretty good case to start out on because it's got yeah it's got romance and it's got mm -hmm. uh divorce and it's got i don't know just a lot of themes that uh, grief is a theme of the show it has a lot of themes that i think are something that the show tries to tackle yeah what did you like oh go ahead and like and it's like you could tell us from like 2013 and not like today's hallmark because yeah. like it wouldn't have been so like dramatic you know what i mean mm -hmm. i think yeah I, I, I like seeing i like seeing them play like have more risk and stuff in mm -hmm. the hallmark shows yeah so yeah I agree with you. I do yeah. too. Mm -hmm. I liked Cedar Cove though. Mm -hmm. I liked the the town. I liked the mm -hmm. setting. Um, oh my gosh, her house. I'm in love with her. No. House. Yeah. Like, well, watch this <laughs> oh, yeah. show for this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, it is a beautiful house. Uh and uh it was this yeah. Was it shot in Vancouver? Like um let me see. Probably. Let's see. Cause um, know, I was trying filmed to in too. filmed in Wash. Let's see. Uh, oh, they you know, they tried to get the series filmed in Washington, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, but it ended up in Canada. That's what I thought. Because okay. it said it was Washington, like a mm -hmm. town in Washington. So I assumed it was like Vancouver as Washington. Okay. Yeah. So like the setting, like it's supposed to be Washington. Because mm -hmm. Seattle's the big city, and so they're like on the coast there in a small Washington town, but the actually filming was not Washington. Is that what you're saying, Rachel? Mm -hmm. The actual filming was probably like Vancouver. In, yeah, probably Vancouver it's Island. Vancouver, Island. Yes. In Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, it's filmed in, yeah, filmed in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, it's based on Port Orchard, Washington. Uh, which is Debbie McComber's summer residence, evidently. Oh, I see. Yeah, I know. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. Well, uh, that was fun. There's, there's little characters. Um, I kind of want storylines for, actually, as, as mm -hmm. they were kind of side characters. I hope that they develop some storylines for um, Olivia's mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, we didn't talk her. about her. I love she was her. Fun. Paula Shaw, she's great. She's uh, one of my favorite, like, in like Hallmark movies and stuff. I, I love her. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, it, we also get Terrell Rothery. I don't think she was in this pilot, but she is uh, on the. Uh, she ends up becoming. Uh, did we see okay. her? I don't think we saw her. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she's she's um, on the cast, and. In? Barbara Niven. Yeah. Barbara Niven, Bruce Boxleiter, we see. Um and so yeah, we uh we even get to see like Jesse Hutch later on, Emily Tennant. There's a ton of Cindy Busby. 
there's a ton really? of hallmark talent who come and go throughout the, the series of the that's of the fun I'm, I'm looking forward to that but yeah. i did like her mom i thought it was fun she, you know they kind of like set her up to be a really strong side character just as far as she's they called her the town historian mm -hmm. um she's a little busybody she knew she knew all everything and um could you know she I, she, she wanted to set olivia up with jack and i mean yeah. there there's a lot of things about her that her dog i mean that i was oh, like the okay, dog. She, <laughs> she could be a strong c character you yeah. know in this whole thing yeah i could see that and, too the statue thing was so funny about them not knowing who the statue oh was. yeah that the was funny years that was ago funny. Yeah, yeah that was funny <laughs> yeah um and so uh, jack does tell olivia that he's an alcoholic recovering alcoholic and uh, so then she understands kind of more why she, mm -hmm. he didn't want to join her for drinks and why he is the way he is and uh, and so then you have olivia attacking to warren and uh, saying hey i've got these pictures uh i'm you know kind of kind of on to you break off the engagement mm -hmm. uh and uh she says i'm a mother first you're not going to hurt my daughter be smart break it off yeah so and we don't know if he did yet we don't, mm -hmm. I don't know uh that's the the uh the uh the you obviously you know this is the pilot so we're gonna be seeing more warren whether they're in, whether yeah, he's engaged so. or or not to her daughter so that's gonna be interesting to watch and and then uh so olivia is being considered for this federal judgeship as you said and uh so she is being interviewed and everything like that Mm -hmm. and she tells but then she tells jack you can't print it on the front page because i'm i'm not going and she turned mm -hmm. down down the offer to for the federal judgeship mm -hmm. and uh he says do you think we can do that dating thing again <laughs> <laughs> and uh and so yeah it's cute and then the the ending is olivia remarries the uh the couple Yay, happy uh, yeah happy <laughs> <ending>. <laughs> she remarries so. that or they they say their vows because they never yeah. got divorced actually but they renew their vows right, right. Uh -huh. okay it's ian and i didn't i just couldn't catch that girl's name the the wife of the um, oh yeah sailor so it's ian and somebody but she remarries them well, i love the scene at the um the Jack comes in, he gives these pictures to about Warren to the judge and says, she's like, where did you get this? You know, and I love that he gave those to her and warned her against him. But then mm -hmm. he was able to take that opportunity to be honest about his past. Yeah. I ruined, I ruined my job, my marriage, my kids don't speak to me. I'm a, you know, my, I, this is my last chance in Cedar Cove at, at this position. And then I just thought it was so cute how they how they he kissed her at the at the door jam you know they're standing there yeah. we shouldn't start anything that we can't finish and yet he does yeah he does. <laughs> yeah that was cute it was good it was really good yeah you're not gonna have any sort of cheap liar reveals kind of thing like these are characters that are being honest with each other which i appreciate mm -hmm. and uh and we're gonna follow their uh their romance through the sh through the sh through the show and uh so yeah it's uh, i think a pretty decent pilot pilot i feel like you get to know all the characters pretty well and there's enough sort of intrigue about what's going on uh and you like we talked about with that you have flawed characters that are interesting and uh you know justine is a fl uh, you know flawed character she's really insecure and in and even olivia says to her i'm hearing security i'm hearing all these words i'm not hearing love why are you mm -hmm. why are you getting engaged to this person uh, why are you engaged to the devil yes <laughs> what? yes she doesn't come out and tell her what she knows i mean i, I feel mm -hmm. like that was a pretty good parenting moment she could have strong armed her really really quickly but yet this is her adult daughter who's making her mm -hmm. choices Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i mean of course i wanted to be like tell her 
Yeah, me too. (laughs) Well, I think she's hoping that by kind of slightly blackmailing Warren that he will just do the right thing (laughs) and she won't have to she won't have to make her daughter go through that. But uh but I'm sure that uh You're right. Yeah. It's it's like I said, it's just a pilot, so I think it's pretty strong, uh, and it'll be fun if if they decide if the listeners decide that they want us to keep talking about this. Then uh, I think it'll be interesting to do. I'm looking forward to mm-hmm. it, and uh, so yeah, let us know what you think of this pilot. If if you want to watch it, it is on Hallmark Movies Now uh, app. If people have that, or I'm sure you can find it other places. And uh, so thank you so much, ladies, for coming on and doing this. I appreciate it. And, uh, and Caroline, where can people find you? You can find me at, on Twitter at Nita Caroline R. Great. And Carrie, what about you? Yep. Look me up on Instagram at Hallmark Comics. Uh, so it's Hallmark underscore comics. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And also uh, make sure you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We so appreciate that. And let us know in the comments which uh, what you think and uh, what you think in comparison to uh, our coverage of Army Wives last week, which one you want us to pick. Uh, we, we, it is your decision uh, of what we cover. We would love to hear your thoughts. So thanks again. And we'll talk, we'll talk to you all uh, next week, whichever we end up covering. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.